Hello, I am Be Better Gamer. Welcome to Be Better Gamer Wrestling. This channel is dedicated to wrestling video games fueled by my love, passion, and obsession for them. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I am playing WWF No Mercy. This is the first part in my women's championship let's play path. I am starting a brand new championship path. I have completed so far on my channel the light heavyweight championship, the hardcore championship, European intercontinental and tag team. So just two more championships left and that is the women's and the world championship and I am going to be first things first. I'm gonna make a little change here. Instead of wrestling as the ladies, I'm going to be changing to superstars where all the women are kept <laughs> in WWF No Mercy and I'm going to be making a few other changes. I'm, I'm very excited to get to this championship run. I've been looking forward to this championship run for quite a long time because of all the changes that have been happening within WWE. WWE is finally normalizing and embracing women's wrestling, something that Japan figured out how to do a long time ago in the early 90s, late 80s. But WWE finally has embraced it where women's main events on Raw and SmackDown are normalized. Where you've had, you know, most recently the first ever women's Royal Rumble. And they are starting to treat the women that come into WWE less like sexual objects like they did in the past. And more so like actual wrestlers, which is a beautiful thing to do. Right now you see I'm, I'm changing the height and wait to accurately reflect Lita, who is going to be the first person I am going to be using in my Women's Championship Let's Play. Uh, going with her actual build, height, and weight that I got off of, uh, I believe I got it off of cagematch.net. Uh, it's probably similar to what they have on WWE. But for some reason, all the women in this game don't have their actual height and weight. So you'll see me do that every time I play with a, uh, a, a female wrestler for my Let's Play. I'll probably do some outfit changes. So a little, little things I'm gonna be doing differently than I have done in my past Let's Plays only because uh, the women's championship run is actually the shortest of all the championship runs in WWF No Mercy. There's only six paths total, only six. So I had to be very selective with who I chose to do these let's plays and each path is only five matches five matches long so they're all going to be really short this this episode and another episode later on are actually going to be a little bit longer than the rest of the women's paths uh this one i think episode is probably going to be around 40 minutes and that's only because um in this one you, you do a whole lot more with lita in general first paths are usually the longest in WWF No Mercy uh, because I don't know they just usually do more matches longer matches in the first path and then later on in one of the other uh, other paths I do I actually have to play in a Royal Rumble which is very fitting like I said you know recently we just had the women's Royal Rumble which was a monumental event here I go facing Mae Young as you saw when I came out with Lita I did want to point this out uh, she's walking in the female stance which I hate uh, you know, I actually don't like it, and I actually thought of maybe cloning Lita fully onto a call to change that and to change some other moves. Uh, I think that would have taken a little bit too much time because I wanted to not have too much time between my, you know, recent tag team championship let's play and the women's championship let's play. But it did give me an idea to maybe revamp. A lot of the wrestlers, not just Lita and the women's wrestlers in this game, but a lot of other wrestlers too. Um, I've always wanted to showcase a lot of the changes I make in my game. You know, like uh, with Kurt Angle, I, 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 I would clone Kurt Angle just so I could give him the ankle lock. You know, things like that. And especially with the women, there's a lot of changes that can be made. Uh, especially later on when I play as Trish. She's missing a lot of moves I feel like she should have. I mean, it's not really... Uh, no Mercy's fault in that sense because when Trish came out uh, around that time, she wasn't as developed as she would later on be as a wrestler, so her move repertoire wasn't as big. But with Lita, she definitely did a lot of stuff that I feel like she's. it's also not represented in this game. 
Uh, so it'll be cool to do that. So look out for that. Probably after I finish my Let's Plays, I'll get to changing some of the wrestlers. Because there's a lot of wrestlers that I want to change. But I just thought I'd highlight that. I'd also like to highlight before I start talking about, you know, the, the historical context of Lita in the WWE around this time of No Mercy and, you know, women's wrestling in general. Uh, it's very interesting to play as Lita in this because she has the taunts for her with, like, S.A. Reels when she comes in. And obviously in this game, they don't have um, tag team entrances. But if you come in uh, with S.A. Rios, Lita, and, you know, he does a taunt that Lita does the counter taunt for. But everything else about her is Hardy Boys. So I thought that was very interesting <laughs> that they, they have, like, her sort of half and half with her brief time uh, being with S.A. Rios. And then obviously what she's mostly known for, her time as part of Team Extreme with the Hardy Boys, Jeff and Matt Hardy. And that's how WWE was introduced to her. It was introduced to her when she debuted alongside S.A. Rios. And then S.A. Rios would drop her because he got mad at her. And then the Hardy Boys would come to her aid. And that's what she would become with the Hardy Boys. And there's a huge legacy there. There's a huge legacy there that I don't want to spend the whole time getting into it. Uh, if you go on the WWE Network... They have uh, a few things revolve, revolving around Lita's time in WWE. They have a great rivalries little mini documentary with her and Trish Stratus, which was very important, very crucial to the women's division at that time. Um, and also they have a, a playlist, a collection as they call it, of matches featuring Lita and Trish some of their famous matches against each other and some of Lita's uh, more memorable matches and Trisha's more memorable matches featuring other wrestlers. This is really cool too because I'm facing Ivory in the second match and Ivory was just announced as being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Obviously, I think we're all waiting for the day China gets inducted to the Hall of Fame, but I, I'm, I'm confident that that day will happen. Uh, I was very surprised actually speaking on Ivory's induction when they did her little promotional video. They specifically name called, name dropped China in that video for one of Ivory's feuds when Ivory was part of the Right to Censor group. Trish, I mean not Trish, Ivory and um, Lita also had a feud when Ivory was part of Right to Censor. Ivory was the one who defeated Lita uh, when Lita first became women's champion. Lita was four-time women's champion and she first won the championship from Stephanie McMahon on an episode of Raw August 21, 2000. Most recently, they made a big deal about um, Bailey, not Bailey, Charlotte and Sasha Banks main eventing Raw in October of 2016 and it was the first time there was a women's main event since 2004 which was Trish and Lita, but the actual main event uh, before that, women's main event before that, was Stephanie McMahon and Lita. And as far as I could tell in my research, that was the actual first time women had ever main evented Raw in a one-on-one -on -one match, was Lita versus Stephanie McMahon, and that was August 21st, 2000. To put it in context, No Mercy was uh, released in November of 2000. And, you know, Stephanie McMahon, when you first play this game, when you first do the Let's Play Path, Stephanie McMahon is the women's champion. So it's very fitting that I chose Lita, I think. I didn't even think of it until after I did my research. I just wanted to do Lita first. But that it's Lisa going after Stephanie McMahon's title because that was the first time she won the women's championship. And they didn't make a huge deal out of it at that time because the women's division, really all it had was Lita and Trish. And then Stephanie McMahon at that time. It wouldn't be until, you know, later on in early 2001, we would get Victoria, Molly Holly, Jazz. You know, we would get so much, uh, so many more women that were great wrestlers in the ring to go along with Ivory and Jacqueline and everyone else that they had. But, you know, uh, Ivory, Jacqueline, I feel like were kind of, and I'll get to this more when I do Ivory's Let's Play. They were like stuck in that weird era of WWE where 
you know, you had in the 90s, they tried to make a, make a push of women's wrestling with Alundra Blaze, but that's all they really had was Alundra Blaze. So then you got to the late 90s where the women just became the attractions. They became sexual objects to be desired by the fans, by the wrestlers, you know, with that m women mainly fitting the role of managers and valets, and they weren't really seen as wrestlers. That's when you had, you know, Deborah and Sable, you know, and BB, you know, all these all these women who weren't really wrestlers, but they were put into a lot of storylines and angles. Uh, but Ivory and Jacqueline were part of that group, and they transitioned into the group that would eventually see Trish and Lita become the leader heads of and Lita was kind of a breath of fresh air for me I remember watching um, You know when Lita showed up and she was doing her hurricanas She was doing her acai moon salts and I was like I had never at that time seen uh, a, a woman wrestler do that, you know a lot of the women wrestling that I had seen before that prior was very mat based Okay, and it makes sense that Lita would do a lot of those high-flying moves because she trained in Mexico and she was a big fan of the Lucha Libre style. Um, so it was very fitting for her to be partnered with uh, the Hardy Boys. But I thought I thought also that she just brought a dynamic that even to this day in WWE, you still don't see uh, a, a female wrestler who embraces that luchador. Uh, style of wrestling that Lucha Libre style of wrestling and Lita always did and I, that was one of the reasons why I always liked Lita as a wrestler uh, Lita had her share of um, you know storylines that I wasn't crazy about but again I think going back it, this was this was part of the reason why I was interested in doing the women's championship I'm very excited to talk about it because I think Going back and watching a lot of what WWE did back in the day with women's wrestling, it's hard to look, it's hard to watch. It's 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 cringeworthy in a lot of moments because like I said, they the they they didn't emphasize the wrestling, they emphasize, you know, the TNA, if you will, the the the, the sex and you know the 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 looks of the women as opposed to how they can handle themselves in the ring. I'm facing Kat, which is very fitting to be talking about this right now because she was another example of someone that they was throwing into storylines with the other women because she was more of a, you know, she was a non-wrestler that they just had for eye candy. And it's hard to go back and watch that stuff, honestly, uh, not only as a wrestling fan today and seeing how much more appreciative they are of women's wrestling and the strides that they're taking, uh, but also just someone as an adult male who's matured over the years. You know what I mean? Like, this is real talk right now, you know? And it's something I, 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 I think about a lot when I look at wrestling. And not just with women's wrestling in the past and WWE, but a lot of stuff WWE used to do. And a lot of stuff WCW used to do where, you know, when you're young, when you're a teenager, when you're a young kid, you don't think about those things. You don't think about the implications they could have um, sort of on your, your young you know, prepubescent male psyche. Uh, but when you become an adult, and especially in my case, an adult male with two daughters, um, you look at those things in a completely different context, a completely different eye. So, like with anything, like with anything that you're a fan of, I always like to take the approach, you know, you could be a fan of something and still be critical of the things that you're a fan of that aren't okay, that aren't right, that are more of a negative than a positive. And it, it, it's interesting because they, they today they talk about Lita, they talk about Trish, and they revere them as sort of like the pioneers of women's wrestling in WWE and sort of, you know, making the way for what women's wrestling has become now. And we all know that's a bunch of crap. Like, you know, like, we all know that back in the day, Lita and Trish... You know, they busted their ass to be seen as women's wrestlers. But WWE didn't even see them as women's wrestlers. You know, uh, especially in the, if we're talking early 2000s, 2001. Uh, they were given opportunities, yes. But at the end of the day, they were still always eye candy. You know, they were still always never seen as being um on par with a lot of the other male wrestlers a lot of the women's matches never went longer than like five minutes sometimes and that's even like with the championship matches 
Um, even with Lita, you know, Lita, as, as great as she was in the ring and as compelling as she was to, to, to watch, she was involved in a lot of storylines about, you know, her just being someone's girlfriend. And obviously the most infamous one uh, with, you know, the whole Matt Hardy and Edge storyline that was based off of a real life, you know, behind the scenes kind of, you know, affair. But also, you know, the weird, the weird feud with Matt Hardy and Kane when Kane kidnapped Lita and all this stuff and you know just all these things that went on with Lita and they, they conveniently you know they don't talk about that stuff uh, very conveniently for WWE they don't talk about a lot of those things uh, but I think it it is good to look back and take a real hard look as to you know what was going on then and how they have changed how they have changed you don't really see a lot of that anymore which is good you know charlotte so far hasn't been involved in a feud where she's someone's boyfriend you know what i mean and two guys are fighting over charlotte it's like we don't need that like charlotte is a badass wrestler and she's going out there and she's fighting other badass women and that's what lita was trying to be she was trying to be this badass woman but the storyline at the time, the writing at the time of WWE, they didn't allow for that. So it's like, it's that revisionist history that kind of bothers me about WWE where they don't acknowledge the mistakes they made. They just, they and they try to take certain things like, oh, we could make this a big deal. Like, oh yeah, that was a big deal when Lita, you know, was, you know, women's champion and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, but you know, the when she first won the women's championship, you know, there was four other men, five other men present in the ring at the time. You had The Rock, Triple H, Kurt Angle, and the Hardys all around, influencing the outcome of that match. And it was all just based on a storyline. Um, I, I kind of wish today that Lita was still able to wrestle. Obviously, she's had so many injuries over the years. Uh, and that actually, I think, affected her career as a wrestler because Trish was able to create a very long body of work when it comes to really good wrestling matches, really great wrestling matches. And unfortunately, Lita, I think, was denied that because of all her injuries. And it's it's almost like she came she came a generation too early, I think. And yeah, and they were they were pioneers. I don't want to discredit what WWE tries to do and say that they weren't pioneers. They were. I just like to highlight the fact that, you know, and we're going to get to it in a bit with WWE of No Mercy. Very clearly, that wasn't always the angle with women's wrestling. And that always, you know, again, as a young kid, uh, as a young teenager who didn't mind watching women come out in, in bikinis and bathing suits, uh, at first, it was a novelty for me as a kid. It wasn't like something like, oh, I have to watch these women come out in bathing suits. I don't want to see them wrestle. I did start I did start to see, you know, when Lita and, and, and Ivory, Ivory was one of my favorites actually, uh, when they actually would get in the ring and wrestle, I would watch them and go like, you know, they can really wrestle, they don't need to be doing these bra and panty stuff, I would still be interested, you know, and I wonder how many other <laughs> young men had that same thought, I don't know if I was in the minority, but it was like, I remember I would very clearly like, yeah, you know, Lita's cute, but like, did you see the height on that moonsault? That was pretty good. Or did you see that tope she did at the same time with S.A. Reels? Like, that was really good. You know, like, let's focus on that. Um, it's also tough to hear the commentary sometimes with the matches when you, when, you know, I was watching some of the Lita's matches and then you got Jerry the King Lawler just finding every opportunity to make some sort of comment about, you know, sex or how good Lita looks or Trish looks and so it's tough to go back and watch that it's like because you don't do that they don't do that for the men you know I never go back and watch old you know Hogan matches and then Jerry you know someone's like oh look at the biceps on Hogan isn't he so sexy <laughs> you know like it's always it's always the women and I get it I get it wrestling is catered to men so it fulfills sort of that fantasy and especially at that time it was so heightened um, it's, it's, it's just hard to watch now. It's hard to watch now. And even going back and looking at it, it just makes you question, like, was it necessary? And I think WWE realizes that it wasn't necessary, um, that there is still an attraction for male viewers to see really good female wrestlers. And I think that's what Lita was. 
Um, the interesting thing I think about the most interesting thing I think about Lita's career is how she was able to with Trish uh, do a lot of these first time main event things um, I, it, at a time that I think people weren't expecting it but also you know to, to just highlight sort of where the glass ceiling was for the women at the time you know you know Bailey and, and Charlotte uh, you know Sasha Banks have all talked about that you know maybe one day they will they want to be in a main event at WrestleMania Lita was only in one WrestleMania match during her time in WWE uh, she was in WrestleMania 18 against Jazz and Trish Stratus Jazz was another one of my favorites because she was so cool so badass and Jazz actually retained that match and from what it's worth from the context when you look at it it's like oh wow that's cool you had this three-way dance between three really badass women at wrestlemania that's cool that that happened it happened at wrestlemania 18 it was the second to last match that went on which is sort of like a semi-made event if you think about it at least if you want to go by you know how the card is done but realistically the big semi-made event was hogan and rock which came on before that match and then the main event was tr with Triple H and Jericho uh, so they were uh, they were buffered in there in the middle um, the crowd was kind of dead I think they were burnt out from you know the, the Rock Hogan match and you know they weren't given a lot of time and that but that was it that was Lita's only Wrestlemania match and again she missed a lot of Wrestlemania opportunities because of injury but the only other times we saw her at Wrestlemania uh, she was in WrestleMania before that, previously in WrestleMania 17, Hardy in, in the TLC 3, which was really cool, and I'll get to that in a second, to go along with another, um, you know, stride that Lita made in intergender wrestling, uh, alongside Edge when he fought Mick Foley at WrestleMania 2, 22, and alongside Christy Hemi at WrestleMania 21 when she fought Trish Stratus, so uh, it, it's it's... It's, it's kind of a shame. Again, I, I think she was just a generation too early. Um, but it's kind of a shame that she only really had, you know, those very few WrestleMania moments. But I think she's probably more remembered for her WrestleMania moment in WrestleMania 17. Just because that was such an awesome match in itself with TL3, TLC3. But, you know, her spot coming in and attacking Spike Dudley and fighting with the guys. That was another big thing that made Lita cool. So... Here we go. We get to the uh, <laughs> the part of the women's championship run that I was regretting having to come to, and this is the only time I'm gonna show it in full. Uh, first of all, I mean, just women in N64 graphics just don't look all that attractive. But the fact that they went out of their way in WWF No Mercy to recreate, I think they're specifically trying to recreate the bikini contest that happened at Royal Rumble 2000 where Mae Young flashed everyone, which is uh, another story for another time. <laughs> um, you know, it's just like the fact that they like had to include this into this game and there will be other wrestling games too where they would include like, you can do a bra and panties match, you can do a swimsuit competition, you can do all these things. And I have to wonder, I, I definitely have to wonder and you can be honest in the comments section below. But how many of you actually played with the women in their bikini suits? How many? Because I never did. Even here, it's very interesting because they do the whole bikini contest thing. They come out, but when you start the match, they're in their regular attire. In the edit mode, you can create these, you know, bikini outfits. But, but who actually spent the time to wrestle them? Like, yeah, okay. When I was 13... I didn't mind looking at Lita in a bikini, but I didn't go into WWF No Mercy and say, oh, I got to play as Lita in a bikini. You know what I mean? Even then, you know, like, and I definitely wouldn't do it now. It's just a waste of time. But it's just, again, it's that mindset of where WWE was at the time with women's wrestling. Here we are, women's championship, the final path, the, the final match in the women's championship path, and it's a bikini contest. Even in the game, they're undercutting these women wrestlers and and right now it's Lita Cat Mae Young and Stephanie McMahon you know honestly like you know Stephanie McMahon I think she got better over the years but she definitely was she wasn't in the ring as much as a lot of the other women like Victoria Lita Trish so I don't think she 
could have got I don't think she got as good as she could have if you know if she was there as a you know a full-time regular wrestler so I do give respect to Stephanie McMahon sort of with with her limited ability what she was able to do because I did find a lot of the Stephanie McMahon matches to be entertaining uh, and I, I especially like the Stephanie McMahon match that she had with um, uh, Nikki Bella was it Nikki Bella no Brie Bella uh, at SummerSlam a few years ago uh, but, you know, Kat and Mae Young, you know, it's not exactly the, the final match I would love to have had for this championship Let's Play. But one thing I do want to go back to was that, you know, at the WrestleMania match, and a lot of times throughout Lita's career, you saw her wrestle against guys. And there's always a, a big debate about that. And WWE was more willing to do it at that time because they had no problem having men and women fight each other and there was a lot of times where women would just get beat up by the men but I do have to say with the context of everything that went on the the women usually always got their comeuppance um, but they would never showcase a lot in you know can these women compete in sort of an athletic standpoint with other men it was always sort of a novelty uh, you know Lucha Underground does intergender wrestling very well and we just recently had the WWE mixed tag team matches where they weren't fighting against each other the men and the women but they you know we it was the first time in a long time we had women and men share the ring together um, Lita fought Dean Malenko um, she faced, I think, Stevie Richards a couple of times. She would, you know, have her things with the Dudleys, you know, when she would dive out on them. Edge and Christian, she would attack. You know, and she had no problem fighting a lot of the male wrestlers. And that was another thing that was always very cool about Lita was that, again, she was a breath of fresh air for the women's division at the time because she was tough you know she you could tell she had this ruggedness about her about her background about you know she went to Mexico she trained there she wanted to be a wrestler and she wanted to show that she could hang with all the boys you know Lita even was part of the first women's cage match with Victoria you know and again coming off of that whole team extreme vibe people saw Lita as like the extreme woman you know she was someone who was able to do these um, daring things that were only reserved for the men that you didn't see other women do. And even to this day, I mean, you know, you have the women's main event with Sasha and Charlotte uh, for the Hell in a Cell. But, I, you know, it was kind of tame in my eyes to the stuff that you saw Lita do, you know, when she would get put through tables or dive off of a ladder. And, you know, I mean, like her moonsault off the ladder against... Um, Trish Stratish and you know just the cage match versus Victoria uh, it, it was very physical and I, I wonder if there's room for that today in WWE you know it's done in the indie scene you know it's done in in um, Mexico uh, you, it just wonders if they're going to do it in WWE is there a need for it not really I, I think it's 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 great that we have the women's division finally being viewed as, as its separate own division and we're able to just watch and respect them as wrestlers and not even call to question it like oh look at the women isn't it funny that they're wrestling like no it's like they've become the attraction it's like people want to see Asuka people want to see Charlotte more so than a lot of other the male wrestlers um, so that's great that we've at that point uh, do we need feuds between men and the women no but I think also there is an appeal there uh, for certain women to go up against the men, just like when China was feuding with a lot of men, just like when Lita was feuding with a lot of the men. You know, Jazz and ECW, when she was beating up a lot of the men. Um, I think certain women can do that. Uh, I'm waiting for the day when Asuka just gets tired of beating up all the women, and she's like, oh, I'm just going to start beating up on the men now, because <laughs> she totally could. Uh, but, you know, with Ronda Rousey coming in to WWE, it, it, you know, the few times we've seen her hurt someone, uh, it's it's been mostly Triple H and now recently Stephanie McMahon. And it's like, and now we're getting the tag team match between Stephanie McMahon and Triple H against Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey. And it's like, is this just going to be another uh, mixed match, you know, or is this going to be an actual true intergender match? 
Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see, but, you know, it was very, it's very exciting to see the strides that women's wrestling has been making within the context of WWE. Because like I mentioned in the beginning, Japan figured this all out in the early 90s. Let's be honest. I mean, Joshi, you know, wrestling, you know, Joshi Pro Wrestling, as they call it, you know, women's wrestling in Japan in the late 80s, early 90s was on fire. And even today uh, with a lot of current uh, female wrestling promotions in Japan like Stardom and Wave, um, you know, it's always been, they've always been competing at such a high level. I actually have a few people who always ask me when they watch New Japan uh, or some other, you know, Japanese wrestling, they're always wondering like, oh, where's all the women? You know, why aren't there any women? You Very rarely you'll see like a woman come out and escort a guy or something like that. But like, there's always like, where's the women wrestlers? And it's like, they have their own promotions. Okay, they have their own promotions. They have their own stars. They don't need to be in New Japan and all these other promotions. They can do their own thing. And I think that's very cool. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, Manami Toyota, uh, Lioness Asuka, Aja Kong, Dump Masamoto. There's so many names that come up that I'm going to talk about throughout the run, especially later on. Uh, but you got to believe, especially with Lita, you know, recently uh, she has been appearing on, you know, uh, WWE as a commentator, you know, in the pre-shows. You got to believe she's loving what's happening right now with r women's wrestling. And I do I do think even though like you want to you want to look at everything, you know, with a critical eye, you don't want to just it was it wasn't all, you know, you know, sunshine and and rainbows for these women back in the 2000s, but you uh, you do you have to acknowledge what they did in wrestling at that time, the fact that they were able to be remembered uh, to this day as you know, true wrestlers at a time where even WWE wasn't trying to acknowledge them as true wrestlers. I think that's a really cool thing. And I think that we're going to see even more of it. I think we're going to see even more of it. And that's why I've been excited to talk about the women for quite a long time. Big Asai Moonsault from Lita onto Mae Young. Oh, and a kick out. Oh, Mae Young's fighting here. <laughs> Mae Young's fighting here. Uh, the fighting spirit of Mae Young. Uh, I do want to talk about, you know, in terms of matches with Lita, um, you know, really watch that playlist that WWE Network has. It's a pretty good playlist. It's got all the biggest hits. Obviously, their main event match, Lita and Trish on Raw. Uh, that was Lita's second women's title win, actually. Uh, I remember it being memorable for me because Lita did that suicide dive where I think she just over-rotated too much. And she landed like on her neck and shoulder and she just completely botched it. Just like how I botched this flying move right now. And you could see everyone in the audience just cringe and just like, oh my God. Like, but then she like keeps going. And that added to the drama of the match is like everyone thought like, oh my God, how is she moving? How is she still doing all these things? And uh, it was just, it's a compelling match. It's a good match. It still holds up to this day, I think. You know, I think in, in today's standards, if that was like a main event or Raw or SmackDown, you know, the crowd would be chanting, this is awesome. Um, you know, that's a good match. Her match with Victoria, uh, the cage match is a good match. That was the Raw roulette match. Um, she, her matches with Mickey James, when Mickey James was becoming like, was that like that stalker character and following Trish and then she like turned evil. Uh, which I actually like that storyline. That was a pretty good storyline. Although there were a few hiccups in that storyline as well. But Mickey James was so good also. And she still is really good. Obviously, she's still wrestling with WWE. Uh, Trish Stratus and Lita, obviously their feud is legendary. And I'll probably talk more about their feud when I talk about Trish. But, I mean, their Trish's last match at Unforgiven 2006 in Canada where she faced Lita for the women's championship. That's another great match to watch. And yeah, I mean, just watch that stuff on the network. I missed the flying moonsault here. I'm missing everything. Here I go, trying to go after it again. And there I do a leg drop that I miss. And I, I was actually surprised I missed those moves. Uh, I think as you go into the parameters, you find out that they gave her the long. <laughs> you know, they didn't give her longest jumping distance. They gave her long jumping distance uh so i missed both those match which again i just assumed that 
she would have longest because she was always seen as a high flyer. Um, you know, in a video game, you just stretch it out a little bit. It's just like, you know, it doesn't have to be completely realistic. Like, okay, maybe she doesn't dive as far as Rob Van Dam, but like, you know, realistically, who does? Like, give her longest because in my mind, when I'm playing as Lita in a wrestling game, I want to do some high flying stuff. So I'm, I'm you know, that, that would be another change I would make if I were to make changes to the Lita uh, character in WWE No Mercy. I'm very excited to do that stuff, actually, um, to, to make the changes, you know, especially with the wrestling stance and things like that. There I go, missing the corkscrew again. <laughs> I'm just, I just keep going for it. Just like Lita, I just have a bravery and courage, and no matter what, I'm not going to back down. No matter how many injuries, um, you know, and that's the heart of a true wrestler, you know. I always say, like, to be a wrestler, it's got to be in your blood. You got to want it. And the women like Lita, the women like Trish, Victoria, Jazz, Ivory, Molly Holly, China, they wanted it. It was in their blood. And I, I, I don't think we should take that away from them just because they're women. You know, I, I don't, you know, even to this day, you still hear some guys like, you know, even with Ronda Rousey, people were making a stink. I saw on like Twitter or some sites they wrote articles about it like oh she's just an attraction because she's a woman and this and that and it's like no like she's busting her ass just as much as the guys and I honestly do think that women probably have to work harder in wrestling to get noticed than the men because there's just always going to be this uh, stigma against them there's always just going to be and part of that has to do with a lot of what WWE did, where WWE in the late 90s and early 2000s and even mid-2000s very clearly prioritized women being viewed as sexual objects and wrestlers. And now they're trying to fix that. And I'm glad they're trying to fix that. They, they still have a ways to go, but I do think that in a few years, you know, we can eventually just move on and and acknowledge you know how great some of these women wrestlers are today and and what women are going to be coming into the company in the future i think it's a very exciting time with rousey i think it's going to add a lot so i'm very excited to continue my path of the women's championship i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you enjoyed this episode this is only part one of six parts it's a short path but it's a very exciting and come on like why do i have to come out in a bikini like this makes no sense <laughs> this makes no sense but there you go lita is your women's champion i apologize that she's out in a bikini i didn't want her celebrating like that but that's the game um and yeah i am the better gamer thank you for watching until next time keep watching all the wrestling